for the first problem, to illustrate this, we're going to take the fraction 1 half, and we're going to multiply it by the mixed number 1 and 1 half. Now, what does it mean to multiply by a mixed number? What it means is we take the, what we are given to start with 1 half, and then we're going to multiply it by whatever we are given right here. So to recall, 1 half is a uh, half of a pizza, that's what this represents, and we're multiplying by one and a half. So we're multiplying, I'll put a little dot here in between, so we're multiplying the one half times one whole plus another half. So let me ask you a question. What if we were just taking one half times one? Forget about the half. One half times one, you would get an answer of, of one half because we're just starting with what we have, multiplying by one, and you would have one half left over. But we're not multiplying by one, we're multiplying by one and a half. So that means that we're gonna take what we start with, we clone it to get one half over here at the end because that's times one, but then we're also taking another half uh, to get uh, the final answer there. Uh, so how do we actually calculate the answer? Let's get the answer and then let's figure out how it all makes sense in terms of magnets. What we're going to do first, let me rewrite the problem down below here, the one half times one and a half. I wanna convert the mixed numbers into improper fractions. Because we already know how to multiply improper fractions. You multiply the numerators and you multiply the denominator. So everything is gonna be much simpler if you just take any mixed number you see and change it to improper. How do you do that? You multiply two times one is two, plus one more is three, that goes on the top. And then the two, the denominator, just comes down to the answer. So what we're saying is that the mixed number one and a half is the same as the improper fraction three halves. So this problem here, where we're taking one half of a pizza times one and a half, we're taking one half and we're multiplying by one and a half, we're saying that that is exactly the same as one half times three halves. So let me show you what that would look like here. Three halves is the same. This is one half, this is two halves, this is three halves. If you put them together, I think you can convince yourself that one and a half is exactly the same as one, two, three halves. So by multiplying it this way, we're multiplying exactly the same amount of stuff, but we're doing it this way, which means that we can get the answer a little simpler because we know to get the answer, we do one times three is three and two times two is four. So we're saying the answer is three fourths. So this original fraction here, the answer here, I'll put it over here, put a gigantic equal sign here, three fourths. So I can circle it here or I can circle it here. Either way, we multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms, we get an answer of three fourths. Now let's see if we can understand this. Three fourths is there's one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. Why is it that when we take one half times this, we get three fourths? It's because when we multiply this times one and a half, first we multiply by the one which would give us one half, but then we have to take half again of what we have here, half again because of this, which is another fourth. So I guess it's gonna make a little more sense if I can maybe put it like this, maybe like this. So if we take this half times one, we get half over here. This is a half, but it represented in terms of fourths. And then we take this half and we multiply by a half. So we cut it in half again, we get the other fourth over here. So when you multiply by one and a half, what you do is you take the original fraction, you first multiply it by one. So you're gonna get a half, which is represented over here. Then, because you're multiplying by one and a half, you separately multiply it by a half, which means you cut it in half, you take this, and you also put it in the answer. So there's almost like two multiplications happening. You take and multiply by one, and then you take and multiply by a half. When you take this and multiply by one, you get a half, which is this half here. When you take and multiply by a half, you cut it in half and you get this extra fourth. So the answer would be three fourths. So it's a half plus the other fourth is three fourths there. So multiplying by mixed numbers, that's what it actually means visually. But what we're gonna do in practice is convert all of them to improper fractions. So let's take a look at one third times one and three fourths. So before we do anything else, let's just talk through what does it mean? It means we take this and we multiply by one. Okay, then we get a one third over there. Then we take this and multiply it separately by three fourths. Whatever fraction we get, we tack on to the final answer and we put it all together and that is what we get. All right, so let's change the problem. One third times, how do we convert this to improper? One times four is four and then we have four plus three is seven. So it's seven fourths. So this problem, one third times this mixed number is the same thing as multiplying by the fraction seven fourths. 
and we're going to multiply the improper fraction version of things. 1 times 7 is 7, and 3 times 4 is 12. And so the answer to the problem is 7 twelfths. That's the final answer. So you see, for every problem, we're just going to change that mixed number to improper, and then we already know how to multiply any improper fractions together. Let's take a look at 3 fourths multiplied by 1 and 1 third. So again, you can think of it as 3 fourths times 1, you're going to get 3 fourths over there. Then take that 3 fourths times a third, whatever fraction you get from that, you can tack on to the final answer. So you could do it that way, but it's going to be much easier just to take this and convert any mixed numbers to improper. 3 times 1 is 3, 1 more is 4 thirds, and then we know how to multiply these. So we just multiply them. 3 times 4 is 12, and 4 times 3 is also 12, and then 12 divided by 12 is just 1. So we actually get a whole number of 1 in that case. It's much easier to convert and multiply rather than having to take this times 1 and get something, and then take this times a third and get something, and put them all together and, and figure all that out. It's much easier to do it this way. So that's how we're going to tackle all of them. Next problem, 2 thirds times 1 and 2 thirds. So again, the longer way to think about it is we'll just take this 2 thirds times 1 and we'll get 2 thirds. Then we'll take this 2 thirds times another 2 thirds, we'll get some fractional answer, we'll put it together with what we got to begin with and assemble the answer. But actually, it's much simpler just to take this mixed number, convert it. 3 times 1 is 3, 2 more is 5 thirds because of the 3 on the bottom. Then we multiply 2 times 5 is 10 and 3 times 3 is 9. So here we actually did get an improper fraction. We want to convert this. 9 times 1 is 9, so it only goes one time. There's a remainder 10 minus 9 of 1, remainder of 1 out of 9. So the answer, you can write it as 1 and 1 ninth, or you can write the answer as 10 ninths. Either way is fine with me. All right, let's take a look at problem number 5. What about 1 and 1 fifth? and we're going to multiply it by 1 and 1 third. So in all the previous problems, it's been fraction times mixed number, fraction times mixed number, fraction times mixed number. Here's the first time where we have a fraction, I'm sorry, a mixed number times a mixed number. So what it's basically saying is something a little bit larger than 1, 1 and 1 fifth, times something, again, a little bit larger than 1, 1 and 1 third. So there is a way to do it in the long form way, but see how it gets complicated. You'd have to take the 1 and 1 fifth times 1, and then the 1 and 1 fifth times the 1 third. It would be messy. This way, we're going to convert each of them. 5 times 1 is 5. 1 more is 6 fifths out of 5 here. Multiply. Convert. 3 times 1 is 3. 1 more is 4. Again, out of 3 because of the 3 here. Now I have two regular improper fractions that I know how to multiply. 6 times 4. 24, 5 times 3, 15. So I have an improper fraction, 24 fifteenths. Let me see if I can simplify this. 24 fifteenths. I think I can simplify it because I can divide this by 3, and I can divide this by 3. 24 divided by 3 is 8, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. So 8 fifths is a perfectly fine improper fraction to write the answer as, but we want to generally convert to mixed number. 5 times 1 is 5, it only goes one time, a leftover, 8 minus 5, the leftover, the remainder is 3, and it's in terms of fifths. So 1 and 3 fifths is exactly the same thing as 8 fifths. I know it looks a little weird to convert and do it all like this, but it's much faster to do it that way than to try to multiply these mixed numbers in a longer form way, as I've been describing. And you'll get the answer every time 100% correct. All right. Let's take a look at 1 and 1 sixth, and we're going to multiply that by 1 and 3 fourths. So again, instead of trying to figure out how to multiply the mixed numbers with the whole and the fractional part, we'll convert. 6 times 1 is 6, 1 more is 7 six. the 6 comes down. Then 1 times 4 is 4, the 4 plus 3 is 7, this one's out of 4. Now I multiply these and it's very simple to do. Because 7 times 7 on the top is 49, and 6 times 4 is 24 on the bottom. So I have 20, I'm sorry, 49 20 fourths. So I want to convert to a mixed number, but these are larger, so I probably need to go ahead and do the division, the long form division here. So let me go off to the side. I'll take 49, I'll divide it by 24. All right, so can it go one or two times? It can actually go two times. 2 times 24 is going to be 48. 
you can say two times two is four, two times four is eight, 48. Subtract and you get a one, the remainder is one. So what we have figured out is that when you do this division, it goes two whole times with a remainder of one out of 20 fourths. So one, or two and one 20 fourths, or 49 20 fourths, same exact thing. These are the same way of writing the same thing. All right, I think we only have two more. Let's take a look. Two and a half multiplied by one and five sixths. Again, you could figure out how to do this long form, but with the fractions, it's gonna be tricky. Let's change it to improper. Two times two is four. One more is five halves because of the two here. Then six times one is six, and the six plus five is 11, and it's out of sixth here because of this. Now we just multiply the numerators. Five times 11 is 55, and two times six is 12. So we have 55 twelfths. We can circle this as our final answer, but we want to also convert it to a mixed number. So let's go over here to the side and let's take 55 and let's divide it by 12. So 12 times five is 60, so that's too high. So it has to be 12 times four. 12 times four is 48. Now you can borrow if you want, or you can just count up from 48. 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. So the remainder is seven. So what it means when you do this division is it goes four whole times with a remainder of seven and it's out of twelfths. Four and seven twelfths. And that's the final answer. All right, we have one more problem. And I think I'm gonna find room for it over here. Let's take a look at our final problem. Let's say it's two and a half and we're gonna multiply that by one and three fourths. So again, let's convert. The two and a half is two times two is four, one more is five halves. And then this one is one times four is four, four plus three is seven fourths. And we multiply five times seven, 35, and two times four is eight. So we have 35 eighths. That's an improper fraction. It's perfectly fine to circle it. Or we can just try to uh, convert to a mixed number. Now I think we can do this in our head. Eight times five is 40, that's too high. Eight times four is what, 32. So it can go four times, eight times four is 32, the remainder 35 minus 32 is three out of eights. Four and three eights, that's the final answer. All right, so in this lesson, we have learned how to multiply mixed numbers together. Now, mechanically, what you do is you change all of the mixed numbers into fractions, improper fractions, and we already know how to do that. So essentially, we have one extra step, and then the rest of the problem flows exactly as we have already learned. So that's great, because we already know how to do it. Now, conceptually, what it means is you take what you start, what you are given, and you're still multiplying by a fraction. It just means this is something bigger than one. So you can think of taking that one half and multiplying by one, and then also taking that one half and multiplying by a half, because this is one and a half. Multiply by one, multiply by a half, and so then you can assemble it all together and you'll get this half and this quarter, which makes three quarters. That's what we're doing for all of these uh, uh, problems. We multiply by mixed number, that's what you're doing. But by changing to improper and getting the answer, you're gonna get the answer mechanically every problem in your, every, every time, and you're always going to get the correct answer. So I'd like you to practice doing it this way, and then follow me on to part two. We'll get a little more practice with multiplying mixed numbers. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.